wonderful human beings and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Remy and I share lots of vegan content and tips to help you live well. And today, I am bleeding. What? Yes, if you read the title of this video, you already know what we're gonna be talking about, but I am on day two of my moon cycle right now. And I thought I would do a what I eat in a day video. There are a couple of things that I like to keep in mind when I am menstruating and I guess I do eat a little differently. Overall, I think I'll be able to share some things that are hopefully helpful for any other human with a cycle out there. Before I share anything else in this video, I just wanna throw out a quick disclaimer that of course I'm not a medical professional. None of my what I eat in a day videos are intended to be diet plans or meal plans for any other human aside from myself. And I actually don't share quantities, calories, macros. That's not really my thing. I just like to share meal ideas and yummy vegan food inspo with other people. I should also mention that the reason why I wanted to make this video and why menstrual health is so important to me is because if you've looked at my other videos, you may know that I experienced amenorrhea um, several years ago. And so because of that, I'm more mindful of the way that I treat my body, taking care of my hormones. And so I'm a lot more mindful when it comes to my hormones. And I do think that food can be medicine. There are a lot of ways that you can kind of support your body. But of course, if you've got something going on, your best bet is always to chat with your doctor first. So these are kind of just tips that I'm going to share, food that I like to eat to help support my hormone health. And I hope that you enjoy the video. Guys, I'm actually really sweaty right now. This is something that happens to me when I get my period. Um, my body temperature just rises a lot more and I'm usually never a sweaty person. I'm generally kind of like an always cold person, but when I have my period, I actually get sweaty and it's just like, that's how I know. That's one big thing that definitely feels different for me in my body. So the first thing that goes into my body as soon as I wake up is water. Lots and lots of water to rehydrate my body after being asleep for several hours. And then along with that, I will take my symbiotic. So this is what I take. It's a pre and probiotic together. I'll just take two on an empty stomach and I feel like this is important for most days but particularly when I'm menstruating I feel like my digestive system could use a little support. You know things are happening down there, things are moving and I just feel like it's really nice to help your body out a little. So this brand in particular is completely vegan because I'm vegan. That's something that's kind of hard to find sometimes when it comes to probiotics. So I'll take that and then I'm gonna have tea but not just any tea because for once I'm not gonna be having matcha which is Probably shocking if you've seen any of my YouTube videos and what I eat a days, but I will explain why. We're gonna make some herbal tea, which I just store in this jar, and it looks like I'm actually just about to run out, which is great timing because I can show you guys how to make it, what goes into it. It's just four ingredients, and really all it is is throwing dried herbs and teas into a jar. So let's make some of that and then have a glass of this moon tea. It's basically a combination of four dried herbs known for their hormone supportive properties. I'll usually batch prepare the tea and make a blend of the four herbs. So I'll start with raspberry leaf. Herbalists believe that red raspberry leaf is a uterine tonic and it's commonly enjoyed in tea form by pregnant women. Then I add nettle leaf, which is an incredible herb. It's known to support fertility and may ease cramping, which is really helpful for anyone experiencing menstrual related cramps. Next, I add oat straw, which is rich in calcium and magnesium. Magnesium is well known to help muscles relax, which again can be really important for bodies on their period. The last ingredient that I like to add is dried hibiscus. I primarily add this for flavor because I'm not gonna lie, the first three herbs together have a very, well, earthy flavor, and adding a little bit of hibiscus not only adds this berry fruity quality to the tea, but also adds a really beautiful pink color. Also, I will admit that the tea looks a little bit like a different kind of herb when it's in a jar like this. And if you don't wanna go the homebrew route, they do actually sell teas that are formulated with a lot of the similar ingredients in the store. So I know that like Pucka Tea has one that I really love as well. You've got options. I'm just doing it in this reusable tea bag and letting it steep in hot water. Usually I'll do an infusion, so I'll do this overnight and just have a big batch prepared that I'll drink. But since I wasn't prepared today, I'm just gonna drink it this way. And you can totally do it both ways. You could also do this iced if you'd like in the summer time but I typically prefer to do it warm. Usually when I'm on my period I try to avoid cold foods and I also try to avoid caffeine so that means no matcha lattes for me, no smoothies. I try to do that. It's not a hard rule but it is something that I try to keep in mind because when I was younger my mom would always tell me to try to avoid cold foods in general for health and I feel like that's a very Asian and traditional Chinese medicine belief as well as Ayurvedic, just very Eastern way of thinking and I think there's a lot of truth to that like warmth is just really really good for the body. So to make this moon muesli, I just grab a large jar and I basically put everything in here together. So I start off with rolled oats and I feel like these are just wonderful for breakfast in general. But I also love them on my period because they provide B vitamins, which are really helpful for boosting your energy. Then I add chia seeds, which are incredible for fiber. I like to add some chopped medjool dates for natural sweetness. They're also rich in fiber and iron as well, which is important during that time of month. 
Now the main reason why I call this a moon muesli is because I add ground flax seeds and ground pumpkin seeds. I also add some whole pumpkin seeds for texture and crunch, but the reason why I add ground flax and pumpkin seeds is because they're typically known to help support phase one of your moon cycle, which is the time during which you're menstruating. Once everything's in a jar, I just like to shake it up so it gets evenly distributed and I would definitely recommend shaking it up before you enjoy as well. And you can serve this with coconut yogurt and some fruit. I like to eat them with berries. You could also enjoy them as overnight oats and just let it soak overnight in the fridge with a little bit of your favorite non-dairy milk. So here it is. It's really easy to put together and I like to eat it like this because it's summer. It's refreshing with fresh raspberries. You could add whatever fruit you want on top. You could also add sweetener. I usually don't, but I really like it with just some fresh fruit and I feel like that's the perfect amount of natural sweetness. So that is gonna be my breakfast. In this muesli, the ingredients that I used are all pretty nutrient rich on their own. So all together, it's very, very nutrient dense. And I'm usually not able to eat more than this. Like I'm a big breakfast person and I love eating like a very voluminous breakfast. But usually when I make this, it's a little bit on the smaller size. It's just because it's more of a dense meal and it's kind of like packed in there, you know? back and in my preferred clothing of choice when I'm on my period, which is just a sweatshirt, usually leggings. In case you guys thought it was polished, uh, that was really just for this video and another video that I was filming, but now that that's all over, oh, I can be in my comfy clothes. And I just feel like that's really important to feel extra comfort when you need it. Anyway, we're gonna make some lunch and I'm gonna experiment with a new recipe that I have in mind that I think is gonna be super delicious. And it's gonna be a tempeh, broccoli, and sweet potato hash. The tempeh will be a great source of protein, but also good for the gut because it's fermented. And then broccoli just for some veggies because I really haven't eaten any vegetables yet today. Okay, shallots and garlic going in the pan. I'm a little lazy, so I'm doing them at the same time, but ideally the garlic should go second. Now the veggies. So this is just about done now. Um, it's pretty much done when the sweet potatoes are cooked through and you like the texture of the broccoli. Ooh, it's steamy. This is so delicious. I know it's really simple, but it's really good and it's got everything you need. I think this would be amazing if you wanted to even serve this with quinoa or as like a breakfast hash. I think this would be amazing. Quick update for you guys. I'm having this snack. And it's really interesting because I definitely have a sweet tooth when it comes to snacks. I love cookies. I'm not really like a candy person, but if there's a sweet snack like granola, cereal, something like that, I'll always go for that. But for some reason when I'm on my period, I really crave like salty snacks. And this brand, Forager Cheesy Greens Chip, I gotta show you what it looks like because it looks like a Grinch chip. This does not look like it tastes cheesy, right? But it's so good. And I love that it has veggies in the chips. Um, just really crunchy. And yes, I'm eating chips in bed right now because that is what self-care looks like for me today. <laughs> All right, human beings, it's time to make some dinner. I'm actually cooking a little earlier than I normally would just because we are starting to lose light and my kitchen does not get too much natural light. We are gonna be making something super easy and quick and nutritious and nourishing and cozy and warming and Japanese. I know you guys love when I make Japanese recipes. We're gonna be making a simple, very basic miso soup. And I love making this when I have my period because like I told you guys, I really like to focus on soups and stews, but this is also probiotic. There's um, sea veggies in it or seaweed, which is amazing for you when you're on your period. It honestly takes about five to 10 minutes max, really, really quick. So let me show you what we're gonna do. First thing we're gonna do is make our stock, our soup base. We're gonna start with some kombu, and this is basically just seaweed that's used for making broth. You can also add some dried mushrooms to this for flavor and some veggie broth. I ran out of dried mushrooms, so we're gonna do veggie broth. Now we're gonna add some of this. What is this, you ask? This is wakame. It's basically dried seaweed. I know it looks like, I don't know what that looks like, but we're gonna add this in and let that rehydrate while the broth is cooking. Seaweed is, oop, steamy. Seaweed is really rich in iron, which is amazing for you during your period. Next is some tofu. This doesn't really need to be cooked, but I want it to be nice and hot and warm with the rest of the broth. I have some shiitake mushrooms, which I'm gonna put in. I would normally love to use enoki mushrooms or shimeji, but that's all I have right now. So that's what we're gonna use. And then of course, we're gonna add our miso paste. I'm using a white miso, which is lighter in color, or shiro miso, but you can also use red miso paste if you want more intense flavor. And uh, if for some reason you don't eat soy, you can get chickpea or rice-based miso varieties. They sell that at like Whole Foods and health food stores. The best way to do this is kind of to go by taste because this will also determine the saltiness of the soup. 
So I start with less and then add more as I go, but I'll usually start with about, what is this? Like maybe a tablespoon or so. So first is to turn off the heat before adding the miso paste, which I know sounds weird, but this is basically all done. Come on camera, work with me. All right, so we got this miso paste. Um, and then what I like to do is add a little bit of the soup or the hot water and then in the spoon, dissolve it slowly because the thing is it's quite chunky and it needs to be dissolved um, kind of like you would with like a roux or something. All right, I think that's about it for what I'm gonna eat today. I'm actually pretty full, so I'm going for an evening walk, which I love to do. I feel like it's really great for digestion and just a really nice way to end the day. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know if you did by giving this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And let me know if there's anything particular that you love to eat when you're on your period. Uh, if you have a period, if you're just watching this anyway because you're interested, that's cool too. But I'm assuming most of you watching this will have a period. So let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.